So if you like black and white photography, fog and trees, then this might just be the video for you. What a scene. A band of trees surrounded by fog and black and white photography and panoramas. Could it get any better than this? Welcome, my name is Stephen. I'm a landscape photographer based in New Zealand. And in today's video, we're going to be taking out the Fujifilm GFX 50S2 for a test drive in the fog to shoot some black and white photography and hopefully make use of this wonderful fog that we've been blessed with this morning. So you may remember a few months ago, I released a video where I went out with my Mamiya 6 film camera and created some black and white film photography images of trees in fog. And I was really quite pleased with those images. And in fact, I got quite a number of images that I believe are portfolio worthy. And they're now listed on my website and will be listed for sale very soon. And it sparked a bit of an interest in fog and trees in my area and I've decided to create a bit of a project out of it and I've called the project Hiding in the Fog and the concept is that it will try and capture objects probably of nature but possibly of other things as well we'll just see how it goes so these objects will be in fog today we're going to go out and extend that project some more as you can see there's some really nice thick fog hanging around the fog's not quite down at ground level it is um, 100 meters or so up in the air and you can see behind us here uh, you can see the fog is really thick over there but around where we are now it's not very thick and there's an area over here just behind us you can just see over my shoulder here it looks quite thick over there and then just over here there's a mountain called Mount Perongia and it goes up to a thousand meters and there's some roads that go up a couple of hundred meters so the plan is to jump in my car and drive up some of the roads that go up the side of this mountain the roads go up about 200 meters and we'll see what we find and hopefully create some beautiful black and white photography images. Come on, let's go, let's go for a drive. So I think we have just found our first composition. I really like how these trees are looking, very kind of uniform. So I am just kind of walking in a bit of a swale here. Thankfully there's no water in here. But we have just got a vertical row of trees here. And I am thinking a panorama. And I'm just checking my viewfinder app and just sweeping through. It does work out quite nicely. 150 millimeter lens four or five shot panorama should be beautiful So we are just going to turn off the image stabilization. Zoom into 100 millimeters, which is effectively um, 80 millimeters or thereabouts in full frame format. ISO 200. That looks about right. Switch to second timer on. 5.6, shutter speed is 250th of a second. Probably don't need a tripod, but we'll do that anyway. It's looking good. So this is the setup here. As you can see, there's just a row of trees. So 
So nice and easy. And we're going to create some negative space on the left. We will just we will just focus the lens and then switch it to manual focus. And then we will just check focus. Looks good. So yeah, we will start the panorama. Two second timer. Looking pretty beautiful on the back of the LCD screen here. I just love the uniform of the trees, you know, the tree trunks themselves. And I just really like how you've got this kind of thick band of tree leaves, bushes, whatever they are, that sit above it. Last one now, just a bit more negative space on the left. And there we have it. That's it for the exposures. You'll just see on the, on the right here, there is another big tree. And I purposefully placed my tripod in a way that this last tree here and this tree on the end here um, are not close together so I've got enough negative space on the right so that I can match the negative space on the left. But yeah, it's looking good on the back of the screen. We've got a film simulation running here. We've got Fujifilm Acros with a red filter. Although that doesn't really matter because we can change it in Lightroom later. <laughs> what a scene. A band of trees surrounded by fog and black and white photography and panoramas. Could it get any better than this? I wasn't quite expecting to get a panorama today. I had a square crop in my mind, but I guess that's the beauty of shooting with digital. You can be more flexible. Um, and I'm really enjoying that. Um, it would be quite nice though to get some square images today. So we'll see what we find. But yeah, first shot, we will combine them together in Lightroom Photo Merge, make some adjustments and edits. I'll show you the raw file. I'll show you the final edit. Here's the first image from today's shoot. I hope you enjoy it. Looking beautiful. I literally drove two minutes, less than less than two minutes, a minute from where I was before, down the road, and I saw this tree. And what struck me about this tree is the fact that all the leaves on one side have gone. And I normally wouldn't photograph this without the fog because it's quite a lot of distractions behind the tree, but the fog is changing everything. It just creates this beautiful separation uh, tonal differences between 
you know, the tree and the fog and the tree just really stands out. So I frame this one up for a square composition and oops, sorry, there's a car going past. <laughs> Locals waving, it's always nice. So yeah, I framed it up as a square composition and I've gone for the pixel shift mode on this one. I'm thinking I've got this huge sensor and amazing technology that's create, you know, that's a, that can create these 200 megapixel files and why wouldn't I take advantage of that? And in terms of my future prints, I kind of, I'm kind of starting to see two ways, you know, two avenues as film photography, um, which is kind of your standard size print, you know, 30 centimeters, 40 centimeters, square, whatever. And then I have large scale prints that are available um, that can be printed up to, you know, maybe two meters wide in, in a panoramic shot. So I'm quite excited about that. So I've done the pixel shift mode shot on this one. It took 15, 16 images. I think it's 15, could be 16 images. And then we combine them in uh, Fujifilm pixel shift combiner on my desktop and then we will import it into Lightroom. But yeah, really liking how this tree is looking. Um, and just, just as we started talking here, the fogs actually change and you can see, you can see more of the background now, which isn't as aesthetically pleasing in my opinion. So I probably got the shot just in the right time. Anyway, my feet are absolutely soggy from walking in this grass. It's very long and very wet. So I'll edit the photo. I'll put it up on the screen, black and white, pixel shift, 200 megapixel image, square crop, Fujifilm Macross with red filter, all that may change. Let me know what you think. I hope you enjoy it. So I just, just find these spectacular trees just right here and they're looking pretty cool. And what drew me to this one is that the gnarly shapes of them, but also the fact that there's this little, little one and it just kind of looks like it's a bit of an outcast, as though the, the bigger trees have cast it out because it's not quite good enough. And I took a few different shots here. So I didn't set up my tripod here because I am pretty much at the start of somebody's drive and I didn't want them to drive past as an as I've set up and then start asking me questions and you know New Zealanders can be a bit funny about um, coming onto other people's properties with a camera because there's poaching issues around farmland and stuff which I totally understand and respect so it's looking pretty good did handhold it I will edit it I'll put it up now let me know what you think I hope you enjoy it So we did just find these amazing looking trees. You can just see behind me here. I don't know what kind of type of tree they are, but they just look like they've been absolutely hammered with the wind. It's quite interesting because we're quite high up here. We're currently about 400 meters and there's still lots of fog around, but now it's raining. And then just behind me here, there's a valley and then that's the West Coast. So the wind must, in really bad weather, just rush up through this little valley here and has just pushed these trees over so they're leaning one way and all the branches and the leaves are all pointing one way and that's what really got my attention about these trees plus there are some really gnarly little ones in there so I just took some shots of these um, handheld um, I'll edit them I'll put them up on the screen I hope you enjoy them black and white photos they're all taken with my 45 to 100 millimeter lens yeah give me some comments hope you enjoy them
Well, and here we have our final composition for today. Can you see it? I'll give you a minute to think about it because there are a few different trees here and they all look pretty good. Which one caught my attention the most? It's raining quite heavily now, which is quite frustrating. I've actually got a cloth on the front of my lens here just to protect it from the rain before I take my shot. So what am I going to photograph? Well, it's this gnarly little fork looking tree up here. Kind of reminds me of a devil fork. And I just love its form and structure. It's obviously a dead tree. And I've got my 45 to 100 millimeter lens on. We're zoomed right into 100 millimeters, uh, which is effectively 18 millimeters in 35 millimeter format. And I've got my aperture F4 because I really want to create a shallow depth of field with this one um, and there's some quite nice cloud haze behind the tree and um, I think probably the rain is adding some aesthetics as well just softening the images a little bit so we're going to do a pixel shift image on this one so we'll just wake the camera up can't see anything yet through the lens I've got the lens cloth on but we are just quickly going to set it up so we'll put it into pixel shift mode obviously gone for a portrait composition just in case I want to include more of the foreground of the sky later on. Yep. So ISO 200 still. Just check. ISO 250. Let's just change that. So here we are, ready to go. I'm just going to give the lens a bit of a wipe. Make sure it's nice and clean. Yes, so F4. Make sure my second timer. Two second timer on. And away we go. Sixteen shots for pixel shift. Okay. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. So that's it for today's video. We are going to end it here. Taking about four or five different shots. I hope you enjoyed them. I've still got to get back home, so if I manage to take any more photographs on the way home, I will put them up at the end of the video for you to look at. So yeah, really hope you enjoyed it. Shame I couldn't go out with my film camera today, but I, and I know some people have commented on that, and I just want to reiterate to everyone that I haven't stopped shooting film. I just don't have my film camera and my new Mimia 6 yet. I'm still waiting for my insurance company to give me a settlement, but I will 100% be using film as part of my workflow and I will be switching between film and digital um, all the time and making video content around that as well. So please don't worry, film photography is not going anywhere, it is part of my life, it is a part of my work and my workflow and it will remain there as long as it can do. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the images, leave some comments, bye for now and I will see you next time, take care.